Welcome to Raw Holla. I think this game is going to come down to sheer experience. Now, will Tiffany be able to control the pace of the game and take that experience that Wrench has and just throw it out the window? Let's find out. I see. So we see Wrench D hopping over to the guitars. And Tiffany hopping over to the guitars. First exchange goes to Tiffany. We see a very aggressive Asiri off the rip. Oh, but a very aggressive Lucian as well. Off stage games already going on from both of these players. We are, we're seeing a much more aggressive pace here in this game, comparatively speaking to the last set, and I'm really enjoying it. As okay. we see, Wrench D opts out for the blasters against Guitar. He does not like that mirror. Like both I of said, them are. We're we'll seeing oh, yeah. some spacing. From Both of them are really not afraid to take that off stage and go all in. Absolutely. As we see, Rensky unarmed with those blasters, collects those guitars. I think in just weapon matchup alone, Wrench takes this because blasters really do outpace sword, and then guitars go even and outpace sword. For sure, but as long as if ooh, beautiful recovery off the wall, off the heezy, taking that first stock from Ranch D. But with blasters, as long as Ranch D can keep Meg, um, not Meg D, but Tiffany out of his space with those side lights, with those end lights, with those down airs, he will not lose. But All recovery right. definitely will catch him up top if he's lacking, for sure. As a Suri is a strong legend. Yes, Tiffany, she is not letting this go. Good nair from Ranch D as he did not get a follow up. GC down sick, trying to catch him. Here's the thing about a passive Lucian, though, Matt Dreamo. It really does get rewarded just because of the Blaster's gameplay style. Like, it's not a combo weapon, it's, it's a space and punish weapon. You poke, poke, and then go in for the kill. It really balances out well with Katara's that is, is combo based and meant to stack damage. As we see, Wrench D might have wanted to go for a sick there, but was stopped with the unarmed Nair as he collects that sick and takes the stock, putting Tiffany onto her last. Juggling through these weapons, starts to opt to the blasters, probably to put on as much damage as he can before Tiffany tries to take his last stock, hits that down there into recovery very nicely. Yeah, see, as I mentioned at the beginning of this game, it really is coming down to sheer experience here. Like, both players are obviously very, very good, very solid in their movement and the punishes that they're going for. It's just wrenched maximizes the advantage that he gets. Whereas, when she Tiffany gets in like... the punish, she does stuff like that. It's it's amazing. Goes in for hard, hard-hitting combos, but wrench just extends it a little bit longer and is getting more value out of those punishes. It's just... At this point, sheer experience and understanding of character. For sure, but we see Ranks is really trying to close things out here as he does with that recovery. GG, big Oppa in the back for the outro. Thank you, yeah. Alright, let's see how game two goes. I feel like if Tiffany does not change up her playstyle, it's just gonna go straight 3 0 in Ranks' favor. It's really going to come down to, again, how well is Tiffany going to control the pace of the game and take it out of this passive, punishing rhythm that's going on. That we are in. Yes, correct. But Wrench it just seems like he wants out of that right now. He wants to stop right now. And so does Tiffany, as we, again, are in a very slight stage, left side stage situation where neither player trying to play center stage. We are just going to edges. Going for stocks, going for that damage. Yeah, and both players probably have in the back of their head, after this set, they have to face the Sandstorm. So, they're probably keeping it, at, at this point, literally repeating in the back. Okay, after this, I fight the guy. He's him. So that has to be doing some sort of effect to their mental. I don't blame them. I mean, if you're here to compete, and if you're here to win, I hope not, because as scary as Sandstorm may be, the guy is beatable. And if they want to prove that to themselves, they got to get through each other first, right now, and do it confidently. 
So yeah. So who do you think? The most side life from Tiffany. Trying to keep him down, but the ground pounds. I'm trying to send him nice. downtown, down there. Reed says, "Nope, never mind. No options. Get my weapon." Mm. Anyway, how was your day? You know, That's so it fun. down life, a little mix up. But D light stairs, send him off stage. Tiffany Ooh. misses that downer. That was imperative. Yeah, Wrenched is really not afraid to go for those offstage punishes. He really knows how many options he has and where his exact line is to play offstage. It really makes going off the side a little too dangerous for Tiffany. You see Tiffany again with that D-Light recovery off of the GC, off of the Iceberg, going crazy off the top. You see... Two stock situation here for both players, but Tiffany seems to be on borrowed time mm. as the stock was collected, as I said. Yeah, Wrench is gonna go for that damage build up with the car with the guitars and then close it up with the blasters. Watch. You might not even have to close it out with the blasters as he's already racking up some insane damage Ooh, on Tiffany right now. No. My goodness, Tiffany has no more options. Made it back to stage, but Wrench no. just turned up. And said no more, bro. Um, I don't think we've seen a ledge guard like that all tournament. That was insane gameplay by Wrench. Yeah, that was insane. Like I'm at a loss for words. Not only did he hit the solid nair on Tiffany several times, but followed that up with the uh, neutral sig and then closed it out with the final nair and dare to take her off the bottom of the stage. Well, look at the Insane. resource management from Wrench, bro. Look at how he made sure he got to stage before Tiffany did. Locked in. As we see, Tiffany is probably switching over to the Caspian after that. I mean, I don't blame her. The gauntlets are going to be what's Gonna make the difference between that blaster. Oh, yeah. Let's take a look at this. Sword just damage. really can't get in. Absolutely. Let's take a look at this damage. We see Wrench took no damage whatsoever unarmed. He said, bro, I'm fighting with weapons and weapons only. Did a you big see? whopping 322 with those guitars, 184 with those blasters. Tiffany only got 70 damage on those guitars and about 115 on those on that sword. But Tiffany definitely made that sword very, very, very useful. Oh yeah, but I don't know if you noticed, Tiffany only had one weapon throw that entire game. Oh, that's so, compared to yeah, that's Wrench really going to be the difference in the new. Oh, dude, players really like to disregard the weapon throw because it doesn't do so much damage, but it's frames, it's it's inter it's interruptions. Obviously, if you can't get in and catch whatever punish you're looking for, you need to open up with a weapon. Throw. It's it's just a matter of mix up and Wrench is obviously Absolutely. utilizing that with the eleven to one comparison. Absolutely. Just using those weapon throws to break the space between you and your opponent is very, very important in neutral. Especially when you know how to catch some by surprise. You are now conditioning them to stay grounded or to start moving in the air right where you want them. As Wrench collects that first stock quickly again with that ground pound. Ooh. That has decided that the games are over, buddy. I'm not playing with you anymore. 2 0 lead, and I'm starving you. I'm trying to take your stocks. I'm not trying to let you play the game no more, Tiff. I'm sorry. I got a fight sandstorm. I got a mission to get on. We tried to now, catch him with that signal off of the wall for recovery. Watching this gameplay, I, I really don't know who would win between Wrench and Sandstorm, but I don't want to call out Tiffany just yet. I think I think Tiffany still has a chance of taking this. Now, it could be that, that last win that starts getting Ooh. crazy. Oh, see? The, it's the, that last save. win. We're going to be seeing a reverse 3-0 here from Tiffany. Okay, Wait, coming in with the Nair, there. trying to follow Absolutely. up with the, the sideline. But Tiffany may need to slow it down a little bit if she really wants to stay in this game as GC D-Light. Sayre collects that stock. Wrench is not playing, bro. He's on a mission. The man on a mission. About to go on a very dirty demolition with these guitars. Hitting those sidelines. Hitting those recoveries. Grabbing the bar. Yeah. Tagged ya. Caspian has done so much damage. Tiffany really need to, needs to start using those weapon tosses, though. I think she's just really trying to rely too much on those SIGs. See, 
Brent taking control of the stage once again. Meg D hitting, I said Meg D, wow. Tiffany hitting a nice side light, grabbed him again, gotcha. Sent him off yeah. the stage. As we see a last talk situation, this is not impossible for Caspian. As I said earlier, Caspian is very strong. Those N6s can do a lot of damage. Those guitars can do a lot of damage. All he has to do is hit you. As we see Wrench unarmed, finding his guitars, probably trying to end the game as soon as possible. But one thing that Lucian definitely can have an issue with is ending the game with his three attack, but it did not seem that hard. Yes! 3-0, uh... Wrench D going crazy. We'll be fighting Sandstorm. Wrench D. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, solid, solid set there. Amazing 3-0 performance by Wrench. We now get to see Radish versus Meg D. Who do you guys think is going to take this set? Personally, after the performance we just saw from Meg D, I think Radish.